Now there are people involved in Linux in open source, open source software that continue to astonish me. I frequently see this. There are things that just surprise me all the time. It's like who knew this was happening, this kind of stuff. So today I wanted to highlight something. So this here, probably can't see it very well, is a 10 plus year old, well <laughs> I guess it's a tablet but it's actually a very very low budget tablet that came out about 10 years ago. It's called a Memopad 7 made by Asus. I hate saying that word, Asus. It's so annoying. So I'm just going to call it the Memopad 7 just so you you know. So there you go, very low res screen. Um, when was it last updated? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So if I go into settings. So software information. So the last build was 2015. You won't be able to see it there, but trust me, I'm not lying, I promise. So that's basically 10 years ago, okay? So its last update was about 10 years ago. It came out about 11, 12 years ago. Very low budget. I didn't even know about this thing. The only reason I bought this second hand about six, seven years ago was because I wanted a tablet for one specific thing to storyboard. As you might know, screenplay, screenwriting, film making related things is kind of what I'm about. And uh, this was really just a cheap way to do some storyboarding. Oh, I didn't care. I just wanted something I could storyboard with. I just needed to put something down on paper, so to speak, uh, on the tablet and put it in my storyboard templates, draw something, put it in my storyboard templates, whatever. You don't know what I'm talking about, look up storyboarding and filmmaking. So there we go. That's it. All right. So let's let's first of all I just want to set the scene here. Why am I talking about this? Well, who knew that this was still being supported, not by Asus, or the memo pad was not being supported, I said I wouldn't say Asus, I said it, being supported by open source uh, really up to a couple of years ago, technically. Technically, there might be a bit of a grey area, and you might be thinking, well, what's so amazing about that. Plenty of devices get supported by open source. Well, let's just put in perspective how, let's say, bad this device is and it was still being supported. And also I want to highlight a certain group of people who are doing an amazing work in the tablet phone space that you might not have heard of, you might have heard of. They don't tend to come up for some reason, they don't tend to get highlighted. So this is my little highlight for them. So have a look at the screen. Um, so here we go, here's some technical specs on the Memo Pad 7, see I won't call it Asus, oh, I've just done it. Um, this, to put this in perspective, this is what people thought of this device, this device when it came out at the time, at the time 10, 11 years ago. This wasn't a ThinkPad, right? This is not a high quality product, no disrespect to Asus. But it was not worth thousands of pounds. It wasn't expensive. Um, it was, as it says here, I know Wikipedia, don't worry, we're going to be looking at other sides. So it was a low budget, a low end budget Android tablet manufactured by Asus. The tablet was announced and released in January 2013. It was notably, one notable thing about it, it was $50 cheaper than its competitors, Google, Nexus, Amazon. Kindle Fire, and I don't think Amazon Kindles were that expensive, but critical design flaws led to poor ratings, so nobody liked this thing, right? Um, <laughs> a single core ARM processor, one gigabyte of RAM, one, mega, one megapixel front facing camera, seven hour battery life. PC Magazine compared it to something else, but would not recommend it. They were being kind, probably. Disappointing battery life. CNET also rated it poorly, citing system crashes while playing games. I couldn't imagine playing games on that. All playing games full stop. Sorry, gamers. Poor battery life and is uncomfortable to hold. 
not good. Not good when it came out. Unbelievably, unbelievably bad now, as you would imagine. So, that is the Wikipedia. So who knew then that there was a whole uh, Arch Linux page. This isn't actually about Arch Linux in this regard, or Arch Wiki, or what Arch are doing. They don't support it, so they actually give a link here. Um, but this, all this information on here, and they basically say you can run Arch Linux on it, it will technically work. You can, for whatever reason, if you have one of these laying about collecting dust and you want to revive it, I will say what I'm doing with mine is you can probably guess I haven't put Arch Linux, I haven't put Linux on it. Well, Linux, it's running Android, which is Linux, whatever. And I, I, I'll summarise at the end, because it's not very interesting, I basically told you what I'm using it for, but anyway, so if you look here on the right, it has a little summary, pretty much working, that's pretty impressive, right? So you can, in theory, run Arch on it, and you can do all these things on the right except for working camera and GPS. Camera's terrible anyway, and why would you want GPS tracking you on that? I mean, mate, would you have it? I don't know. So, there we go. Um, that's the arch. So I'm not going to focus on arch um, in this regard. Here is a GitHub page on it. And she interestingly, the last uh, four years ago. So this is a bit of a grey area because uh, guys, I want to highlight here. So when I'm saying about the updates, it hasn't hasn't really had any updates in the last uh, few years. So this is the GitHub on it. You can see here. Uh, something about a readme, whatever. But I assume it still works. Um, I don't know which version of kernel it works, but let me put it this way. If it was last updated to Android, uh, last updated on Android by Asus um, nearly 10 years ago, or coming up to 10 years ago, that's still pretty impressive, okay? So the point of this is, is really to get to these guys, post market OS, who are a, uh, well, um, what would you call them? They're a community, Linux community, but they're an open source community who are keeping old devices alive, but not in the way you might think. So their their whole thing is not doing like Lineage OS and Graphene and that. So I have a phone that runs Graphene and, you know, in theory, they just really uh, ape or copy um, Google, so if you know what Graphene is or Lineage and all that, they are mirroring Android and putting their own updates and having it completely free and open source without all the Google stuff, without all the Samsung or whatever manufacturer stuff, depending if the device is supported. The whole idea of this is not to put those Android operating systems on that, it's to put Linux on this. So these are like ARM based, you know, obviously Linux is on ARM, whatever but to support them as well up to 10 years. And you think, apart from, uh, say, uh, Google lately, I think they've been forced to support their phones for up to eight years now. Previously, it would be like three years, maybe four years, five years if you were lucky. So these guys were and are, as you can see here, the project aims to provide a 10-year life cycle, a life cycle of Linux for 10 years on devices. And so therefore, why have I brought these guys up? Because this is what they're doing, or have been doing for this, in theory, okay? So um, the other thing is, of course, with phones, um, problem, one of the problems with um, Linux and phones is, Linux, or Android is specifically really for phones and these kinds of devices. Its architecture is made to support, you know, making calls, but, Interestingly, recent efforts um, mean that some devices you can uh, make phone calls, get SMS data, not just use Wi-Fi, and you can use mobile data. So, doing good work, doing good work. So, um, this is post-market OS, so you can, I'll put all this in the uh, description. So, they're saying, we're sick of not receiving updates shortly after buying new phones. Maybe a bit better now, maybe. But that's the principle, sick of the walled garden, so if you know, if you're running a phone with Google, you cannot remove the Google software. There are ways around it, so this one, yes, it's still running Android. I have not installed post-market OS, I will explain why at the end, briefly. But 
uh, with ADB, which is the uh, Android bridge or debugger, whatever, you can arbitrarily remove these things or disable them, even if they're not, uh, even if the bootloader is not unlocked or the or the device is not technically unlocked. I don't know. I can't remember, but um, and so there we go. It's uh, into and it's. Uh, you can read this. Why am I even reading this? Right. So these are the devices. Uh, so how to install it, and then you've got instruction install guide after you install, and these are the main devices here. Um, you can look at all that. Uh, this is the wiki for this is Post Market OS's wiki themselves, and uh, they actually have the device on here. There you go, ASO, Asus Memo Pad, and look at that, all these things are working. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. So, these are all the devices you can have a look. If you have an old device that you want to be maintained after the manufacturer, that might well be. Or you can contribute, of course, you can, if you're a developer and you know what you're doing, you can develop for these devices. Um, Let's just close that. I just, I just wanted to highlight these guys. I know this is not the best video in a collection of not best videos that I make, but I'm just highlighting these guys. I just thought I'd make a mention of them. Um, and here is their specific page on the ASUS MemoPad 7. Um, contributors there. Uh, users owning this device. Interesting. I've actually got... I've actually got... Something about oh, okay, so there you go. You can have an intimate idea of the kind of developers who are uh, owning and developing this device. So here you go. You can prepare, blah blah blah. You can do all this stuff. Get it ready. Bluetooth's a problem on it. Whatever. Why would you want Bluetooth on that? Well, you might need it. But look, all this, all this stuff's working. Fantastic, fantastic. And I put this in perspective. It's a one gigabyte. RAM device. I mean, that is even for even for ancient tech. I mean, it's just extraordinary that these guys, you know, until recently would have been supporting. This. Maybe they are in some other way. I don't know. I don't. I think the GitHub's and GitLab's and that aren't being updated with new um, commits and whatever. So, I think that's pretty impressive. I just want to highlight these guys. I think. Just give them, give them a bit of attention that maybe other Linux uh, YouTubers aren't. This is quite, this is a real rambly video. I think this is even more rambly than most of the time. But I will actually say there is interestingly a connection to Suckler software, which people might think I'm a downer on. I am not a downer on Suckler software at all. But um, there is a project called XMO, which is effectively a Suckler's philosophy projects. Um, the philosophy of Suckless, you know, to be very minimal, hackable, all this kind of thing. Um, XMO, SXMO, sorry, is a recent creation. I think only a couple of years ago, uh, there was a big video on this by one of their main developers who was demonstrating um, the things you can do with XMO to be on a, a device like this, really, without a keyboard, well, all that kind of stuff, and using Suckless type software like terminals and whatever rather than heavy KDE environments or GNOME, which you can run on this. So if I was going to do it, I'd probably use something like XMO, which is a nice lightweight environment. Um, I don't know enough about it, to be honest. I did look at it in the past. Um, it's interesting there, they talk about memory-hungry issues like internet browsing with Firefox and Chromium. So, you know, there's still going to be problems, still going to be problems. But in theory, you know, these things are all updated. None of this stuff on here, apart from maybe some of the Play Store, but the Play Store, if I remember rightly, isn't um, updated on here. So, I just, there we go, they're highlighted. You can look into that, if that interests you, hopefully I've badly explained, but explained enough on on what this is all about, what these guys do. Um, just make a mention of it. Anyway, what I'm going to shut up now on that. I'm just going to make another mention of this. So why, why have I not put um, Post Market OS or XSXMO on naming conventions? I don't know. 
on this device? Well, because, first of all, the reason I bought this was because I wanted um, a, a, an app, not a specific app, but a drawing app that would work with my finger or a stylus pen, sorry, to draw things and I don't really care about anything else with this device and I don't really want to use these things to run Linux or Linux in the traditional sense I don't care if it's got Android or Linux as long as I can do what I need and I've got a piece of software that I can draw it's perfectly fine for storyboarding and that's it and then I just transfer over the images and put it in uh, my templates or whatever so that is it I maybe one day if I replace this I will try just out of curiosity, I'll do a video. Me, maybe I'll do a live stream. How funny would that be? Trying to install Linux um, post market OS on this if if I could. And uh, that should be amusing. Um, that would be the only reason. So that's why I don't do it. But I could, when I came across this, I just thought, oh, wow. These guys, you know, just to put this in perspective, this is a bad device. This is not a good device. This was bad at the time it was made. It was just to fill a gap in the market to people who wouldn't even spend that extra $50 on uh, Kindle or whatever. And I don't blame them. I mean, I got this second hand for, like, you know, years ago for, I don't know, £40 or something. Just to do that, that's perfectly fine for me. I don't care about these things. I mean, I like the ThinkPad, but so what? I mean, it's just a device. It just gets me where I need to get to do the things I need to do to make all these wonderful rambling videos that make no sense so um, there you go there you go have a look at Postmarket OS if you've got some old hardware laying about you might be able to get it working with Linux have fun it'll be a learning experience just think about that you'll learn um, some interesting things probably I don't know I just thought it'd be nice to highlight them anyway another lovely rambling video for you um, Enjoy. Enjoy. Oh yeah, fake YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe.